people Wait. watching. There, yeah. there. Thank you, Adam. Good okay. to see you. We got signal yeah. now. Yeah. We forgot okay. to hit the magic. Uh, yeah. Button. We weren't saying anything of consequence before then, anyways. No. Literally. You We're missed just, nothing. Yeah, you missed nothing but empty calorie verbalization. We're just, the Goslings. He's yeah. Jonathan. I'm Nick. Yep. And we, and I have long, skinny arms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's all we got. And I have done absolutely nothing for the past at least thirty hours. Um, I I rediscovered my. Uh, I use a Lenovo ThinkPad yeah. laptop, mm -hmm. and it's like the last. It's one of the last laptops with a CD-ROM drive, with an optimal drive. Right, right. And so I discovered my old Diablo 2 game <laughs> CDs, and I have I them on see. CDs. And you can you can download them from yeah. Blizzard, you know, and you can download all the stuff from Blizzard, and then you got to patch it if you're running Windows, Windows Me or Windows 10 or Windows 7 or whatever. I run Windows 10, and for some reason, just loading up the CDs, no problems. Okay. So, like, for the past 30 hours, I have been doing nothing but going You've through. You've been neck deep in Diablo. I have, too, right? I have been. Crushing levels. Yeah, I have been deep, Fight, deep in Fighting Diablo. the forces of darkness. Yeah, I have just been palleting my way around, just whacking demons, mm -hmm. That's you okay. know, accomplishing. No judgment here, you know, I mean. I've sent out, like, two emails for the books. Uh, I've, uh, I've. That's good. Approved Adam's, uh, Adam submitted his first 15 minutes for, um, uh, yeah, it was a good time, Adam. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I burned through uh, a pack of batteries on the mouse already. The little, little USB, the Bluetooth mouse. So, uh, it's been great. And in doing so, I remembered how much of that game, like there, I hung on to three PC games, uh, Diablo two, um, myth, um, the total codex, which is myth, the fallen Lords and myth. So or not missed myth. So right, right, right. Yeah. You guys, myth, if big difference. yeah, I remember and, missed. Yeah. Boring game. Yeah. We, we barely made it into that. And then thief, the dark project and thief too. So like in those three games, it's amazing in like going back and looking at them, how much they have inspired the Heavenly Realm series. Interesting. You know? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Like in the. In What's the, the ratio? Diablo, Myth, Thief? <clears throat> Diablo is the heaviest. You think so? No. Well, Diablo and Myth. Uh, thief. There are certain elements of Thief that, that really come in handy. Um, like. I th I'm pretty sure I got the glyphs from Thief, but they were in Diablo too. And Adam's then, uh, familiar with the game Thief. Yeah, dude, you guys like uh, you guys would probably love Thief over there because so much of it, like the design team, Looking Glass Studios, they went to England and I think to Czech Republic, and they went to all these different places in Europe and just took a bunch of pictures of uh, architecture. And Thief was originally designed as a game where you uh, it was like a it was like a a dark version of King Arthur mm. where you were Mordred. And you were the anti-hero, and King Arthur was like this oppressive ruler. Mm. And so you were like sneaking through Camelot, stealing things to you know from mm -hmm. from King Arthur. And they eventually mm -hmm. turned it into something else. But but especially Adam uh, as a uh, as a narrator, as someone who pays a lot of attention to sound, um, you would especially like Thief because mm -hmm. most of Thief is really because it's the first first person sneaker, like the first person stealth game to ever be made it relies really heavily on auditory cues. Mm. So like you got to watch what you're walking on, whether it's carpet or tile, you got to like, you can listen for the guards and see how close they are. You know, it's just, it's a bunch of cool little, <clears throat> little things like that. But cool. But yeah, deep dive into the nostalgic origins of the crap that I write that no one reads. <laughs> you sounded like you felt guilty. <coughs> for playing, for, for diving into that for the past 30 hours. A little bit. I mean, I've been getting over a cold. <clears throat> so, you know, it's a little justifiable. But, like, I remember sitting at my desk at one point and just thinking, this is 100% resistance <laughs> to me writing Sasquatch Ellipse. I don't want to write it. I don't really care. I'm not into it. I just want to play Thief or Diablo. I just want to play. And you know what? You don't like it? Hey. It's your time. You know? It's your time. Yeah. Do what you want with it. Yeah. You know. So that's that's what daddy's been doing. It's it's a lot of fun. If you can if you can find if you have an optics drive, find the old CDs on eBay and play them. They're they're an awesome time. Or just watch it on YouTube. Tons of people do playthroughs. 
And dude, Diablo 2 is the artwork, the music, the the level design, like all of it is just it's really really cool. It's like it's like grim sort of gothic like dark fantasy. It's not really like high fantasy. It's really interesting, really unique. The music especially. The music is great in it. So anyways, that's been my life. That's been your life. That's yeah. only, that's only been your past, so, you know, thirty whatever hours. Those are the only hours of the but week you got where some, I did uh, anything constructive. <laughs> really? You didn't do any writing since last week either. Uh, I don't think so. I think. Um, I mean, I was thinking back on it, and honestly, man, like you know, I wrote. I basically doubled the page count of Empyrean Falling over the past five months. Yeah. I did finish reformatting Sturm and Drang from Adam's thing that he gave me. Okay. So that's, that's that good. was an accomplishment. That's good. Um, and, but as far as like writing anything new, um, no, not really. Okay. I didn't, uh, I had a crazy dream. I haven't been feeling well too. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a legitimate excuse. I think, uh, you're I mean, cold and you're feeling crappy. Yeah. Well, and there's that school of thought that like Pressfieldian yeoman, like, you know, workmanship attitude of like, start the next one tomorrow, you mm -hmm. know, but then, but then also honestly, like. I don't know about you guys, but I've been doing this crap for 20 years and like, you know, take a couple weeks off, you know, you finish a project, unless you're just like hungry to get back into the next one, take a couple weeks off. Absolutely. You know, I mean, take a couple months off. <laughs> yeah. Take whatever. I mean, dang. You know? Yeah. 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 What about you? Do you do it like that? Or do you just immediately, or do you have multiple plates going? At well, once? there's, you know, like there's the plan. Oh yeah, yeah, but then there's the reality, <laughs> right? And you know something, it never has anything to do with writing or book stuff, but something outside me will happen. You know, some you know some emergency or mm -hmm. you know getting sick or you know whatever it is, and it'll just kind of knock the wind out of my sails. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, I'll realize how tired I am, mm -hmm. and I just won't. I'll just feel burnout, and so I'll, I'll it'll be a month or two or two months before I. Really? actually start writing again that really? happened like three times last year no okay that's why it took me to write that's why it took me so long to finish book five of uh, the travelers they took yeah. forever for me to get around to finishing that okay you know and that then did, that did take a while i remember you starting to did. kind of seem a I was little very strung out over that one. i was just frustrated You're i frustrated, just couldn't yeah i just couldn't get the motivation to do it and then finally the motivation happened and along with i carried that momentum into writing harry half moon which like i you know, I just cranked out in two months' time. Two months. Two months. Harry Half Moon. Wow. Henry Half Moon. Yeah, and that was on the that was on the back end of finishing book five finally because I was so excited about finishing book five. I was like, finally, I'm back in the groove of writing. Yeah. I'm going to keep writing and go into Henry Half Moon, and I sailed through it. It was yeah. great. Wow. Yeah, but when you're in the middle of that, when you're in when you're in your momentum, you feel like, oh, I got this. I can do this twenty four seven for the next five years. Yeah, and that's not true. Yeah. It's yeah. not true. No, it feels that way in the moment. Yeah. You wrote all of Henry Half Moon in two months. Mm -hmm. Is that just the first draft, or was that in completion? Like completed? Well, I don't write a editing. second draft. I don't write a second draft. I write a first draft. Right. I do a self edit, and then I send it to Sue to edit to an editor. Right. Yeah. And then she goes I mean. through two rounds of edits, and then I have yeah. a couple of proofreaders, and they they read it too, and they're doing that while Sue is doing her edits. Oh. Okay. So I compile all the edits into one you know, one final version. Right, right. How long does that process normally take? Um, it shouldn't have to take more than, I mean, two or three weeks. Yeah. It shouldn't. I mean, well, it's depend it depends on, you know, how soon my proofreaders get things back to me. You know, it could take a couple months depending on how busy they are. But, I mean, really getting the professional editing back is what's most important. Yeah. And so that can, you know, Sue's quick, man. She'll have it back in a week. Do you, um, where I sue's pretty quick, do you set a deadline for uh, for your uh, beta readers? I do, yeah. 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 I say I need this back by a certain date, and they okay. typically they typically do. If they don't, do you? I move them... forward. Yeah, yeah. I move forward. That's the thing, <clears throat> that's the thing that people who are involved with independent artists have to realize, is that, like, you are not the most important person in the mix, mm -hmm. whether you're the cover artist, whether you're the publisher, whether you're the agent, whether you're 
the marketing person, whether you're the beta reader or the editor, you are not the most important person in the mix and you dance to my timetable. Mm -hmm. And I tell you when to be done. And if you're not done, we either start deducting money from we punt, you get punished or cut that fat and throw it in the race bin. You're sometimes out. you gotta, yeah, sometimes you, you know? have to change horses in the middle of the race is the yeah. bottom line. Yeah. You know, that happened with the, uh, you know, my old cover designer. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, well, you know yeah. what? That's that soft eyed millennial didn't deserve your money. So. <laughs> soft eyed millennial. Soft eyed, yeah. soft handed. That boil, yeah. that barrel full of boiled peanuts. Yeah, dude, he was. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to talk about like yeah. no intestinal fortitude. Mm -hmm. He's got as much grit and sand as a soggy bowl of cream of wheat. Talented as heck, though, man. I mean, just super, he was. super talented. Yeah. But he just, uh, he just didn't have the, he didn't, he just didn't have any professional savvy, right, about him. Yeah, you know, he's, yeah. you know, there's just, he's my, young, he's just learning to do there. Yeah, all. and you know what, my first one too, same problem, except he didn't have youth on his side. He was my age, oh. if not maybe closer to your age. I mean, he was in that yeah. thirty-five, middle age, forty, yeah. yeah. And uh, and same deal, man. And um, I remember. Yeah, you know, I might be willing to actually. I might take back what I said about going to England. I might be willing to go to England just to find him. No. Yeah, just just to pay him a visit. Yeah, Guy Ritchie style. You know, <laughs> I mean, and God, bless so his get a one-way ticket mm -hmm. at the minimum. Yeah, get there, feel things out, and then decide if you want a return trip. Yeah, I mean, if I can, you know, I might be. I might be that way to, you don't lose any money, just in case. Yeah, I might be trying to smuggle myself onto a onto a boat, Indiana Jones style, back <laughs> to the U.S. You know, because I'm a wanted man for wall to wall counseling. So I'm just going you know. to Mexico. Mm. Then, I know. Mexico then walk right anyways. in for free. Yeah, yeah. Then I could just go to the southern border and, and just <clears throat> yeah, just come right up. Um, I tell you, the other problem I had with some of my other cover artists, like the ones that did uh, Triptych Codex, is uh, they would they would argue with me about what looked good. <laughs> like I would tell them, no, I want it to look like this. They would be like, no, that doesn't, that doesn't look very elegant. You know, mm -hmm. be like, Oh, uh, well, um, I didn't ask. So, you know, yeah. do it, yeah. you know, do what I tell you. I'm paying you. Yeah, you know, for sure. Have, and that's the thing that you like, know what your book, you know what you want your books to look like. Yeah. And if it fails, it's my fault. Because I made the decisions. Yeah. You know, the buck stops with the author. And um, in self publishing. In self publishing. Yeah. yeah. Now in normal publishing, you have no say over anything. In loser publishing. Yeah. Loser, yeah. Yeah. In chump publishing. Yeah. You know. So, anyways, yeah. Trials and tribulations. But thank God we have Adam who does his work. See, he knows. He says yep. a deadline is a deadline. Yep. You know? And, uh, you probably have heard this conversation <laughs> before. Yeah, deadlines are yeah. yep. That's true. Yeah, Jason. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, Cameron rearranged my room. And, uh, well, we swapped rooms and Cameron, like, did a whole thing. I got my bookshelf set up now with uh, with my cover that Nick framed for me as a Christmas gift. And then I have this picture of Jesus that my uh, great aunt gave to me that if you stare at it long enough, uh, it looks like he's weeping. And then it looks like he opens his eyes. It's really cool. It's really weird. interesting. Yeah, it's, it's. Does it talk to you? Uh, only, only when I've had a lot of whiskey. Will you tell so. me what he says? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Can for I a, submit questions <clears throat> for a mild indulgence? You know, <laughs> for mild plenary indulgence. Um, and then Jason, the third thing on the on the bookshelf is your cover, <clears throat> and uh, and I, I get a chuckle every time I look at it. And I really do got to figure out how to make that into a special edition cover just for Jason. Yeah. Where I take out everything that's referencing a horse. Go because he hates horses. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> like he stopped, yeah, he stopped yeah. reading the book because it had a horse it had horses in it. Yeah. You know? Which Jason, let's talk about that by the way for a minute. I'm gonna explain to you uh, uh why you're wrong um and dumb. No. Um See, this is, it's more fun when you can actually like talk back and forth because uh, then he can call me dumb too. Um, but uh, flying in the Heavenly Realm series is the equivalent to running. And so like when you were in the military, how far could you run in full gear and still be combat effective? You know, only so far. 
That's why you take the Humvees and the helicopters, you know, to conserve the energy. So it's the same thing with horses in the books. So it's it makes sense. Could I? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, so very good, very good. And quick shout out to Mike Steber who's watching hey, on the French Mythology stream. Thanks, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for checking us out and watching. We are a tough, uh, couple of uh, newbie <laughs> self published authors trying to figure everything out. Uh, we try to be as pretentious as we possibly can be to yeah. fool you guys into thinking we know what we're doing. And angry. And angry. Yeah. That's just that just comes along with yeah. not having any, you know, success. That that's just part of. I think I'd part. still we're be so angry. uptight and tense. Yeah. You think it'd be even if you were super successful, you'd still be angry. I think I'd still hate people just the same. Yeah. Well, Stephen King is still <laughs> creepy AF. Yeah. See, I mean, he's George R. R. Martin is still a, a misanthropic little troll. <laughs> And he's had all the success you could possibly have. He is. You know? He's a troll. <clears throat> I don't think he knows what to do with the money. No. No. What do you – I mean, now that Epstein Island is closed down, what do you do? <laughs> he didn't have a shot mm -hmm. on Epstein Island. Yeah, even he, they're like, mm, it's going to cost a little extra for, <laughs> uh, for you, Tubbo, you know, the Howard Taft of the writing community. You know? He looks like a – Fat. He looks like a ball of lard <laughs> with pubic hair stuck on. Oh, yeah, you know, hard in that little cap, that, that black stupid little hat. cap that he wears. Oh man, and his little suspenders. Oh man, yeah, yeah. His books are middling at best, but that's why they're successful. Because they're middling. Yes. Yeah. I, I noticed, like in 2010, when I was reading through them, because I didn't read them until then, reading them and watching the show at the same time. And as I was reading the books, I was like, you know what? This is not like this is not Stephen Pressfield. This is not Hemingway-esque material. This is like one step above Dean Koontz. This is one step above Stephen or uh, Stephen King. You know, it's not erudite. It's not going to drive you to the dictionary. It's it's very accessible, and that's that's what you need. You need that Dan Brown level of mediocrity in order to you know. So if you want to be you heard successful, it here, folks. Yeah, Dan came, Brown level of mediocrity, dude. Dan Brown, Dan I Brown. I want Dan Brown level of income. That's what yeah. I want. Well, Dan Brown barely rates as mediocre. Dan Brown uh, is arguably one of like he'll make you dumber reading his books. <laughs> like, you, if uh, you if you think Dan Brown is good, well, bless your heart. My my writing's pretty, you know. Get you for kids, man. Yeah, I know, I know, you but know? I, but no, but at the same time, I've only been writing for two years. You know what sickens so. me too is that Nick has only been writing for two years, but he automatically like has handles on things that took me ten years to figure out. Like what? Like pacing, character development, um, voices, giving voices to certain characters. Like it just, you know, it's like I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nick, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. And uh, well, I mean, I appreciate that. He kind of knows what he's doing. Yeah. Learning, yeah, mm -hmm. learning from people like you, yeah, yeah. grinding yeah. for twenty years, <laughs> yeah. you know, just yeah. just grinding in my little organ grinder monkey box, just yeah. you know, oblivious to the world. Yeah, I think you, you just know. you didn't start writing too early, but it's unfortunate that you know self publishing wasn't an option when you did finish your first novel. Oh yeah, you know, because it would have been <laughs> such an amazing opportunity and solution for you back then. But and yeah. I came along way after self publishing was already a very established thing, or people were having a lot of success doing it. Yeah. So I got to like, hmm, I could compare traditional self publishing. Traditional seems like a lot of work and a pretty long shot for someone new like me. Yeah. So I could do the self publishing route, and that seems to be working so far. And you know, we're building. You know, we're building. Well, but Nick was a real blessing and a real godsend as far as the timing goes on that, because. Nick not only broached the subject in a way that I didn't think could be done, but um, but also the timing was really good because it gave me a chance to go back and and redo the work in mm -hmm. a way that mm -hmm. really elevated it. I still have the original draft. If you read the original draft, and you may have been one of the ones who tried. I may have foisted it upon you back in 2005. But if you were one of the unfortunate ones to be in my life who loved me, who read the first draft, like it just, it's unbearable. I mean, it's, it's, there are moments that are cool, 
But <clears throat> you compare that original version to what's out there now, mm -hmm. and it's almost like I needed that that 15 years, mm -hmm. you know? Sure, sure. To, to refocus and reshape. So, yeah. I think that now with, you know, 85, 90% of every book being sold is being sold on Amazon. Yeah. Traditional publishing, as we all know, is taking a massive hit. Oh, yeah. And having yeah. your book in a bookstore is really, you know, more of a, you know, it's a, if that's your goal, great, but it's more of a vanity play. It is. Than anything else. Yeah. It's not a, you know, yeah. not necessarily a, you know, a, 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 you know, in, you know, big check maker. No, it's, it's really not. not. A big income play. <clears throat> and really, uh, the money that they used to spend putting you on a book tour, they can now devote to uh, hosting you on YouTube channels, you know, mm -hmm. for interviews. Like well, traditional days. public publishing won't. You still you have to do all your own marketing, yeah, even really? if you're yeah, absolutely. Traditional publishers not going to do that for you. Oh wow, you yeah. still have to market it. That's what the agent is for. You know, the only thing they do that impacts marketing is they have wide distribution to bookstores. Oh sure. You know, so there's going to be visibility there. There might be some like promotional, you know, you know table placards or whatever they're going to put up in their store. Yeah. But you still have to go out and do the book signings and plan. But dude, that. how else am I supposed to get on Oprah's Oprah's book club? Well, how else am I supposed to get that coveted sticker? <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, I get mm -hmm. that. I want to get the Newberry. You know. Yeah. I want to get the Newberry medal. Yeah, the Newberry award. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Did you ever read like any cool books in school growing up that had the Newberry award? No. No. Yeah. I mean, now, have you read any cool books that were New Newberry award winners? No, but. I'd still like to have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd still take it. I'd still be like, sure, I'll take you know. that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, for real. For real. You what hear that uh, Trump got acquitted? <laughs> I did. Yeah. I, can you – so riddle me this for all the Q-tards out there, of which I, I – like, I'm, I get it. But, like, can you impeach someone who isn't a president anymore? Well, clear, apparently not. I mean, can, like, how can you even go through that process without it being a total kangaroo court? It, it was just political. You know? th they kept using the term political theater. Political theater. And yeah. it proved out. It, it proved that that was, in <clears throat> fact, the case. I just don't. It, if you want to talk about, like, <clears throat> the one thing that um, that makes me think that the Q tards are right, it's the simple fact that there even is a second impeachment. Because you shouldn't. If someone's not in office anymore, you shouldn't be able to do anything to them on that level right. outside of whatever you could do to a normal citizen. So because like all the Q tards are like, well, he really is the president right now. He's still the president. Yeah. OK. It's, I mean, a good, it's a good point. I mean, <clears throat> if they find this video, they might impeach us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, grounds oh for God, removal please. from office. I would. Yeah. I love the, op the I mean, the publicity alone. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Put me on Newsmax. I mean, come on. You know? or it's OAN. just establishing OAN. grounds to remove someone from an office that they don't even have anymore. Yeah. It's just – it's ridiculous. And I don't even think that you can really use that – I mean, I know they talk about it being a preventative measure from allowing that person to run again. That's that's the whole point. But but if they're not in office anymore, how does it – how is it valid? That's, that's what I keep coming back to. Yeah. But it doesn't matter um, – because your vote does not matter. Uh, they don't care about you. Well, that's and true. they are not your friends. Even the cool ones. Like, uh, have you ever seen the Mitt Romney? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the DOA. <laughs> the DOA horse. You know? I mean, you want to talk about, like, beating a dead horse that's dead on arrival. Mitt Romney is what I always imagined Darth Vader looked like underneath all the stuff. <laughs> like, right, he takes yeah. it off and his hair's perfect. Uh -huh. And it's all, like... Yeah, chisel. Handsome and... president business man. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm handsome corporate man. He looks like yeah. every villain from the 80s. Yeah. You yeah. Know. And he basically is. Every villain from the 80s. And <clears throat> 80s. Well, I just you know, I'll I'll give it to the Democrats like at least they're more upfront than the Republicans about their about their villainy, you know? Like the Republicans always masquerade as, you know, being the, the defenders of constitutional rights and, uh, you know, the defenders of, uh, of free speech and the middle class and all this stuff. None of them are like mm. they're all on the take 
you know, the only one who's like even remotely cool is the Utah Senator Mike Lee. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the video of um, Mike Lee giving the speech, the rebuttal to the Green New Deal. Mm -mm. <laughs> Pulls out the he's got visual aids, you know, it's it's all satirical. Okay. <clears throat> and he's like, <clears throat> you know, what are we going to do about, you know, people outside of the, you know, uh, contiguous U.S., people like uh, up in Alaska as far as transportation, Green New Deal wants to do away with, you know, trains and planes. How are these people going to get around? My suggestion to you, Mr. President, is tauntauns. <laughs> <laughs> these, these bipedal repto, you know, repto mammals are biologically friendly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's hilarious. And it's about 13 minutes long. And he That's goes through great. like two or three different things like that. It's really funny. But um, I got to check that out. That's brilliant. Senator Mike Lee. Brilliant. Senator, Senator Mike, yeah. Mike Lee, um, <clears throat> Green New Deal speech. Is okay. Probably. Right. I'll check it out. You know, I'll yeah. Check it out. Yeah. If you've never seen it, man, it's 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 really funny. You guys should check it out. But um, but even that was from a while ago. But yeah. Yeah. None of these people. They're all they're all corrupt. They're all bought and paid for by China and and the other country, you know, Um and uh, and they're all corrupt and awful people, and you shouldn't give any credence to any of them. I mean, every one of them is a, a vile serpent, you know. And, we assumed. Yeah, we assumed. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, in the past, the past four months, I've only shown that. So yeah, you know, to hell with all of them. <laughs> that is that is Jonathan <laughs> Goss's official position on that. May they all be <laughs> replaced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one thing, until there are term limits, there's there's no credibility. Oh, yeah. with, with politicians yeah. in Washington. Well, you need term limits. You also need no um, trust. You also need hardcore accountability. Um, <clears throat> you need uh, you need the same the same laws applying to the average citizen. You think there them. would be additional laws? Yeah. For being a public servant. Well, if you apply like biblical principles to it. Because I think I can't remember if it was Paul or Christ, but one of them warns against the high stakes danger of being a shepherd, of being a pastor. Mm, Paul, you know, yeah. Was it Paul? Mm -hmm. So apply those same principles to government. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you can be in this position. I tell you, one thing that they could really do would be you only are allowed to earn uh, the median average income of your home constituency. So if you're a senator from Tennessee, you only make whatever the median average is for Tennessee citizens. And if you get caught making any more money than that, you get all of your money taken away and you either get kicked out of the country and you're never allowed back. Uh, you get executed or you go to prison for the rest of your life. And that money it's pays for. Yeah. And that money will pay for your your prison costs until it runs out, and then you face execution or expatriation. <laughs> I don't know if you guys These get this or not, penalties. but like, you know, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> you know, that's that's what it boils down to. Is like, you got, I don't, you know, yeah. Until you start doing that, nothing changes. Right. So, you know, I have a neighbor who, um, Christian raked her leaves. Oh, cute. For and he was out there for two hours. Yeah, and I helped him a little bit. You know, we got a sure. yard cleaned up. And she paid him thirty dollars. Thirty dollars to break the leaves. And I told her that Ooh. was very generous of you. Wow. And she goes, yeah, minimum wage. Because you worked for two hours, but you helped. I didn't say anything, but I was like, mm, no, I'm no. sure it's like, yeah, like half that. In you know what would have been right really now. funny is if you, had, <laughs> but great, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Well, you take half of the money. Yeah. Be like, oh no, you're, you know, I think you're a little off. I think minimum wage is seven twenty-five an hour. Yeah. So, uh, so I guess this is mine. And then here you go, Christian. Yeah. There you go. Minimum wage. Yeah. Minimum wage. Uh, no, no, that money's supposed to go to him. Oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> Take it back. Yeah. Well, yeah. We and, already, uh, we already spin it on like trim <laughs> flags and MAGA hats. So. You know, be so funny is wait for her to come. Wait for her to be outside. When you when you take that stuff and put it outside, you're like, hey, buy look. some bumper stickers that say minimum wage, fifteen dollar minimum wage will sink the economy. Just yeah, put it on the back of all of our cars. Yeah, 
drive slow. Look at what your look at what your minimum wage bought us. <laughs> Man, this is cool. <laughs> hey, when the mob comes and they're all looking to kick in doors, we're gonna send them to your house, okay? You get minimum wage. Yeah, yeah. you can pay them. Yeah. Speaking of the mob, I heard a crazy thing. I was talking to a guy this past week on the phone, and he was from uh, he was doing work in Atlantic City, a charity in Atlantic City. He's trying to set up. Huh. And it's a blighted area, and they have crazy laws. Hey, really? They don't have to document gambling debts. Huh? So, yeah, they gambling debts gambling debts don't have to be documented to be legitimate. So, if you're in the mob, <laughs> you could target anyone <laughs> and be like, yeah. "You were in my casino. <clears throat> you owe me thirty thousand dollars." Yeah, yeah. You know? And then you have to spend like. Your fortune in court trying to find it or just pay up. Yeah, wow. They could just totally just strong arm you into paying whatever Can they Can they make up a number? There's no record of the debt. So how does that – Unless you're in... keeping record of your own debt. How does it hold up in court? It it doesn't, but the cost to oh, go to through the entire yeah. – to fight it through court I see. is oftentimes more than yeah. you know what the claim is. Yeah. It's so shady. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I was blown away. I had no idea. Look, violence Atlantic is the City. supreme authority. I'm just going to tell you right now. Yeah. You know. Well, whoever so. controls the military controls the country. Yeah. In every country. Yeah. In including every the country. US. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jason says good. Yeah, good stuff. Term limits. Period. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Financially releases. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, like. Uh... Financial disclosure disclosures, oh, like releasing yeah. senators' tax records, they yeah. need to be public information. If you're a oh, public that, servant, why can't your tax, you know, tax returns right. be public information? Yeah, and you're only you should only be allowed to really serve for like ten to twenty years max. I mean, yeah, maybe totally. even less than that. Just terms, just but, whatever the term. They have four year mm, term. What do they have? One <laughs> term, two term. Mm -hmm. I mean, just yeah. you know, yeah. Pick a number and let's be done with it and get on with it. But having someone serve. Like a life for like 40, 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. You know. 47 years in office doing what? Just collecting kickbacks to perpetuate. The insider trading is what know. kills me. Oh, yeah. You know, if you're not in Congress and you know what's going to happen with the stock, you know a stock's going to go up because yeah. there's going to be a giant in government investment in a particular firm. And you get wind of that and then you buy that stock. Because you had that insider information, that is high, that's highly illegal. It's a federal yeah. crime. Yeah. But if you're a senator in the same situation, mm -hmm. and you know the legislation on the table is going to boost the profits and 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 shareholder value of a particular company, and yeah. then you put a, invest a bunch of your money in it, and then they pass the law, and yeah. you personally enrich yourself, there's it's how is that not insider trading? Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, how that's okay, and that's okay. what they're that's what they're all. You know, that's what they're all doing. Oh yeah. Yeah, well, it is a it is an elite class that writes laws to protect themselves and punish anybody who tries to play their game by their own rules. And no agenda plays into that more. It creates more of an opportunity for that than climate change. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Climate change. Okay. Climate sure. changed here. Climate changed here. Yeah. Recently, it's freaking cold. It's like yeah. twenty degrees outside, and in this garage, it is also very cold. Yeah, There's I wish. No I wish climate change were real. So it'd be like 70 degrees. It'd be nice. Oh, that'd be you know? great. Yeah. That'd be great. We should be planning Adams in the UK. It's got to be freezing. Yeah. Yeah. Would you leave him alone, Shelby? She <laughs> just know. wants so much. She just wants the affection. Well, you know what so it is? Bad. It's Valentine's Day and she mm. wants to be with Lily. Oh, she yeah. She wants to be with her girlfriend. <laughs> you know? We, uh, we opened Lily's Valentine's Day bark box and it was, it was like a weird collection of like, it just was very disappointing. We're like, really? This is huh, okay. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> we should have wrapped this you. This is my dog oh, Shelby, everyone. Easy killer. Jeez. She's a labradoodle. She's a lab with some doodle. Yeah. Yeah. Now she's licking, licking on Jonathan's elbow. Well, you want to do one offs? Yep. You want to do our one offs? Let's do one offs. All right, yeah. let's uh, hold on a second before we do our rock, paper, scissors. Hey. Ah, get all loosey goosey. Yeah, Ready that's for right. The competition. Yeah. Turn my head around backwards. There we go. <laughs> let's do ready? this. Yep. One, two, three, shoot. Oh, ah! nice. <laughs> He's got his mojo back, everybody. Uh, I had my rally cap yeah. on. That's why. All right.
Do they have to uh, uh, traditional English weather? Yeah, I bet, man. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, not a lot of sunlight up there. Do they have to document winnings? Yeah, see, that's the thing. I don't know if they have to know. document, especially if you're an out-of-state citizen. Like, do you have to document winnings over there? That's an interesting one. I'm going to blow my nose. Oh, yeah, go for it. Go for it. I grab my one off here. I hope that was productive. It sounded like it was. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, nice and gross for you. Lots guys. of reasons in that. I'm napkin. hoping this is the Rona, so I can be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, because I can't catch it. <laughs> exactly. If it's the Rona, I can't yeah. catch it. I've already yeah. been there. Uh, okay. All right. So uh, for anybody tuning in, who I think all of you guys are probably regulars, but for anybody tuning in who doesn't know, typewriter one-offs are once a week. Nick and I um, write on our our old typewriters. We have like a couple of these these old Royal Deluxe typewriters yeah so these things are awesome and you can get them for like under a hundred bucks on marketplace or ebay or whatever they're super cool they're a lot of fun very focused it's a different writing experience mm. uh writing on a typewriter it feel obviously the mechanical feeling really feels like you're building something uh very tangible you know old school cool hemingway s kind of uh the other thing about it is uh it tends to laser focus your writing um, and you're, because you can't just backspace your way out of something. Mm, yep. So you kind of have to think about what you have, or if you're just going to pants it and just wing it and just go, you have to play the wind as they say in golf, where you kind of have to like, just, okay, well, that's not exactly what I wanted, but that's what's on the page. I can't undo it. So we're just going to mm -hmm. keep working off of that. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing is, um, no distractions. <clears throat> Unlike a laptop or desktop, there's no Instagram, there's no Facebook, there's no email, there's nothing chirping or chiming or beeping or booping at you, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so you can kind of just... No know, notifications. Yeah, it's it's all mechanical. So you yeah. really can just like stay focused on yeah, yeah exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. um, and so it really kind of informs the writing. Mm -hmm. in a really cool way. Mm -hmm. And every week Nick and I do just like these one-offs where it's just like a single page, typically a single page story um, that we've been talking about like compiling into maybe like a book to publish. And then people can build off of these because these are generally not self-contained one-off stories. These are kind of like launch pads for other people to write stuff off of. And it just runs the gamut from anything. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, yeah. and we do this every week. <clears throat> um, all right, let's see. Let me, uh, let me catch up on comments and then we'll read real quick. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, let's see. Do I have to document winning? Shout out to uh, Bobby Bryson. Yeah, hey, Bobby. Fringe Mythology as well. I think Thanks, another man. guy named Marcus Barr was watching. Okay. I don't know if he's awesome. still watching or not. Awesome. But, um, Glad you guys, uh, let's see. Uh, fixes a lot of side of the watch. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, and credit from bad, yeah. Have the wrong socks in your firm, did business with them, but <laughs> right, yeah. <clears throat> so, as a GS, as a GS employee, Jason, if uh, if you were out of dress code, did they did they punish you uh, pretty hard for it? Did they like tell you, like, well, everything you've done here, I'm sorry, it doesn't count because you weren't wearing the right socks? <laughs> Answer that, and I'll get through mine here real quick. Okay, <clears throat> so this is mine. This is my typewriter one-off for this week. The New Mexico heat beats down on my brow, sending sweat trickling down my nape and blinding me with its light. I take my hotel key from the clerk and walk across the parking lot to my room. Number 357, third floor with a view. The film crew is waiting for me. Everyone is wearing sunglasses, even inside. The director and one of the actors are there, one fresh off his stupid Transforming Robots from Out of Space franchise, and the other from his role as the smart dwarf in that high-budget fantasy show that appealed to drug-addled sodomites and corporate employees who used to mock fantasy as quote-unquote gay nerd crap. <laughs> Live long enough, and you'll see the stupidest things become cool. Both of them are bragging incessantly flipping back their shoulder-length hair and grinning around, sucking teeth and itchy noses. I can't wait for the team to get here. The maid intersects my path. She's older, frail, and with dishwater blonde hair around a ruddy, leathery complexion. She pushes her housekeeping cart and mutters something about the children that I can't quite make out. She turns back to me and shushes me with a finger. 
Everyone's laughing. And then the room implodes. Harpoons take the dwarf on steel cables, squealing into the afternoon light. The director leaps out of the shattered window and catches a few tow cables, but not before doing something with his hands to make the sun set early. He levitates in the parking lot, soaking up our gunfire and reeling in the team. It gets torn to shreds. Everyone screams. The air fills with gun smoke. But you can't kill them at night. No wonder this bastard from hell has survived for so long. My lapel pen often gets mistaken for a golden rondelle dagger with wings. It's not. It's a wooden stake. We all had our theories, but now we know though it cost us. The Rosicrucians will be angry, but we had to know for sure that these sleepy little backwater, backwater filming locations are harvest grounds. Vampires feast on them, on the most succulent of meats, children. And now we know, in Hotel Hollywood. Ooh, interesting. Surprise you touched on uh, something vampire related. I had a dream. Yeah. It was like really? this, yeah, it was like this massive dream that I had that I woke up at like eleven thirty last night or midnight and just I tried to type up as much of it as I could. Dreams are so slippery, man. Like they just, you know, it's like trying to catch smoke. Oh yeah. It just the longer you take, the more of it slips away. And you can feel it even as you're typing furiously, just mm -hmm. more of it is just it's like holding ice. You can hold the ice, but eventually the water slips through your fingers and drips away. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I got about two thirds of it written down in a word file, but there was still a lot of it that just, there were scenes, whole scenes that are missing. Hmm. And, uh, and it was, it was like this whole dream about like, what if Hollywood was like infested by vampires hmm. and like, that's why people go missing. That's why people get sucked in. That's the whole hmm. thing with children and the Illuminati and the, you know, the Pizzagate stuff and just Hollywood. It just, it would be a really cool short story. It's just really inspired by like John Carpenter's Vampires, mm -hmm. which if you've never seen, you got to watch John Carpenter's Vampires. John Carpenter's Vampires is awesome. Uh, they use, that's where they use like the harpoons to drag them into the sunlight mm -hmm. out of their nests mm -hmm. and they burn. You know, yeah, I remember. That was cool. Great. And then, um, and James Woods is in that too, who's like the only conservative left in Hollywood. Um, and from dusk till dawn, you know, with it being kind of like a, a home base out in the middle of nowhere, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's just like, maybe that's, you know, it'd be cool if you had a story where, where Hollywood was just like this, like hotel California of just, of just vampires. And they're just legit vampires mm -hmm. and they're just feasting on children. And so like every vagabond child, every time who comes to Hollywood looking to make a name for themselves, mm -hmm. you know, every time they go to a filming location mm -hmm. out in Belarus, you know, or mm -hmm. Cambodia or something, you know, they're just, they're just gorging themselves. Huh? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks, From man. a dream. That's awesome. Yeah. I have a yeah. recurring dream where I, I'm still working at Starbucks <laughs> and I'm still the manager, but I haven't shown up for any of my shifts in like a month. The and then I had to finally show up for what I hope is going to be my last shift mm -hmm. and I'm still hired. I haven't been fired yet and I don't want to be fired. So I show up Yeah, and yeah. everything goes wrong. You know, it's too busy. The customers are mean and everyone hates me because I haven't showed up for any of them. Oh, it's shifts. a disaster. You know, and I'm hoping it's my last shift and I look at the schedule and I'm scheduled for like two more weeks. I'm like, no! <laughs> Recurring dream. I've had that dream two dozen times over the past three years. Ever really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like the high school dream. It's a me. different store every time. Different employees. Yeah. Different customers. But it's the same dream. Yeah. Oh, I hate it. Yeah. That's a nightmare. I have the same one about high school. And it's just, it's all the same stuff. You know, yeah. you're just back in high school. You're having to take classes over again. You didn't graduate, it turns out, you know. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. Just makes you want to kill yourself, you know, <laughs> kill everyone around you. Well, so. Anyways. A lot of people feel that way about high school and their experience. Yeah. and Very I'll, few people have great high school experiences. Yeah. It's very rare. But you know what? And I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, man. Like, I learned this from being in ordination class. If you, um, I didn't ask for that. I'm sorry, dude. That's oh, okay. That's okay. That's what it's here for. I'm so rude. It's okay. No, um, it's, for, it's for both of us. <clears throat> so, like, 
I have a giant tanker to refill it in the That's true. kitchen. So That's we're true. Good. Fair enough. Um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, one thing I've learned uh, from, especially being in ordination class, like 12 years ago is um, because I saw the wide variance of, a of ages. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk about running the gamut of ages, sure, yeah. everything from my age on the young side to seventies. Yeah. And <clears throat> um, it was a lot like being back in high school. Hmm. And I've seen that several times over in jobs, in other social circles. You're talking about in how people are the dynamics so relating dynamic. to each other, talking, tr treating each other, essentially. Yeah. The dynamic of the classroom, not the fact that it's a classroom setting. And right. Oh, yeah. Material. Thank you. yeah not no. a bunch of adults saying, oh, this is great material. Let's all behave, mm -hmm. you know, and support mm -hmm. each other and learn this. Here's the thing. People like revert to that high school mentality. Yeah. Whatever problems you or your children are having in high school, figure them out now because it doesn't go away when you become no. an adult. No. People don't mature. Like some of the corporate environments that I've worked in, um, <clears throat> man, people have college degrees. People are married. People have children. People have responsibilities and salaries. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They are no different than – than freshman French class. It's mm. no different, mm. the maturity level. And that's the majority of people. And so like if I had children, I would, and they were in high school, I would tell them like, we got to figure this out now. You have to figure out how to navigate this at the very least mm. or defeat it mm -hmm. preferably because this is what life is like. This is what the majority of people yep. are like for the rest of your life. Yeah. They are this immature, they're this petty, they're this clicky, this stupid. Mm -hmm. And you're going to deal with that forever. So you better figure it out or else you're going to be behind you're going to be behind the power curve in every social interaction moving forward and it's not going to help mm -hmm. you at all. Yeah. You know. And that's a dismal thing. It's unfortunate, thing, yeah. but it's true. I mean, it, for <clears> most <throat> people. Yeah. For most people. Tribalism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Made from babies? <laughs> <laughs> Baby boo, oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing that the vampires in Hollywood are probably sick of Mexican food. <laughs> yeah. 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 They're probably they're probably sick of Korean barbecue. You know, <clears throat> they need a new war to import fresh, you know, exotic baby meat. Yeah. You know, that's why they're all like gunning for aliens, because it's like, what do alien babies taste like? <laughs> Can we get our adrenochrome from alien babies? You know, uh, <laughs> dude, yeah. I, I bet they're hoping it's out of this world. So my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was yeah, go for it. low hanging fruit. I know. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Here's my one off. Low hanging fruit tastes good, though. It's juicy. Yeah. I like it when it dribbles, dribbles down my chin. You know? <laughs> I can smell it in my beard. Yeah. Bro. You can smell the aroma in my yeah. beard. Or in my case, my. Dick Van Dyke goatee. Yeah, whatever, right. whatever this is. I don't even know what this is. Unshaved. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> when David looked over his shoulder, he caught movement in his periphery. It was an ashy gray flash contrasted by the stark red and pink that blazed against the foot deep snow. He was a little surprised. Typically, the predator had long since fled and only the mildly fearful scavengers remained to suckle at the carnage. David knew from the size of his, ev of his evader, the height of this grayish blur that just ducked out of view, that it was most definitely the same elusive creature he'd been studying for the past six months. Not that he needed an encounter with the beast to confirm it. The spray of blood, the carefully curated organs stripped from the carcass, and the absence of footprints were all telltale signs, calling cards. David had puzzled for months at his quarry's technique, its movements, and most of all, he wondered at its intelligence. While he sensed a small degree of danger being in the beast's immediate presence, he felt very little threat. Had this thing been stringing him along, vanquishing smaller life forms and leaving them as gifts for David? Perhaps this was the nature of the beast, to baffle its pursuers with the most bizarre hodgepodge or menagerie of victims. Every time it was a different victim, each successively larger than the last. This time, 
It was the neighbor's cat, Meow Meow Dickens. <laughs> While David heard, when David heard the doorbell ring, ring, his mind snapped back to his task. He patted his leg and whistled. Come on, Rolo, come inside now. Rolo, the huge gray wolf husky mix, bounded through the yard, leapt onto the deck, and healed at David's left knee. <laughs> a black kitty cat carl, uh, collar dangled from L Rolo's mouth. Tufts of white hair and pink bits of gore shamelessly still entangled in its fibers. boy, <laughs> David offered a quick ear scratch. Best keep, best we keep this between you and me, <laughs> he said. David picked up Meow Meow Dickens' collar that Rolo laid worshipfully at his feet and flicked it into the kitchen trash bin then headed to the front door to deflect his neighbor. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, <clears throat> here's what's You perfect. think he's tracking, like, the dog man. Right. And yeah. he's just fantasizing because he's let his dog have to take crap and saw another animal he killed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah basically. <laughs> I love it. Well, <clears throat> the, the beautiful psychological insight of that is the name of the cat. Meow Meow Dickens. Meow Meow Dickens. Yeah, because every every unlovable Frumposaurus Rex chick I have ever known is a massive fan of Charles Dickens. Mm. And and it's disgusting. And it just it's almost like it's almost like if you're talking to a girl you don't know what she looks like just ask her what do you think of charles dickens and she's like oh, i love charles dickens <laughs> like david Copperfield's my favorite book but they haven't read any they haven't read any dickens done the case. they haven't read it they're done. just trying to sound smart all all right all cat i love dickens i'm a fan but i'm not a, i'm not a chick yeah but you're a man yeah i i appreciate yeah. dickens at a much deeper level yeah man level yeah. you know i mean <laughs> you're God, we're not demonetized yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm a little sick, so I don't care. So, you know, whatever. This his is for Dickens' first book, his debut novel, Pickwick Papers. It's about a club of men that go all the way around England. Have a bit. Not a chick in the whole novel. <laughs> it's all really? dudes yeah. in a fraternity. Yeah, I think uh, it's I think awesome. Really, there. Are, I think there are some very, uh, some very psychologically relevant reasons why women at least pretend to love Charles Dickens. But you can almost tell, like, of course, of course, you know, a cat lady, the archetypal yeah. cat yeah, lady, yeah. is going to name her cat. Is going to name her cat Meow Meow Dickens right. because the <laughs> because the despair that's in Great Expectations is the same despair that she feels about her unfulfilled life. Right. You know, <laughs> and now that she, she deserves. Now she also feels because she can't find Meow Meow Dickens. Right, and now meow it's meow even Dickens worse. Gone. Yeah, meow, yeah, meow Dickens is gone because he's so gone. Yeah, meow, meow Dickens thought it was a good thing to go up against. What was the dog's name? Rolo. Rolo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, Rolo, right. as in the Viking. Yeah. 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 Dogs always win. Yeah. You know. That's Heck yeah. Thing. So, yeah. She needs a Dogs. she needs a little Dickens. <laughs> yeah, she she does. Yeah, you know she needs a little Dickens. But who's Who's going to make that sacrifice, you know? Not the I Nickens. Mean, yeah. <laughs> 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 the, the Nickens, the Nickens ain't going to make the Dickens. It's, uh, the Dickens ain't going to come from the Nickens. Oh you know? man. I wrote another one off too. I wrote two. I wrote two today because you? you know we're always like it's always a last minute thing, or oh, I just yeah. finished right before you walk in to do this. <laughs> yep. And I wrote. I actually did it early today, and I wrote two, so I'm good for next week. Oh yeah. Yes, okay. I'm good yeah. for next week. The I literally is have off. like walked in. It's probably the one that just. I mean, they all aren't great, but like it's going to be on this like really sucks yeah it well, probably will be but hey you know what no i pressure. like to set the bar as low as possible so that you can just sort of like roll over it you know <laughs> like you would in bed like just absolute minimal effort you know yeah 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 that's i think that's perfectly fair yeah you know i have walked in before by the way getting ready to do this to the sound of the typewriter you know <laughs> so yeah yeah i fair. like to set the bar as high as possible and pretend I'm a limbo champion. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm just going to coast right under this. Yep. I'm going to contort myself in a way that exhibits maximum effort to go under this. Right. When half of the effort would have landed me over it. Yeah. 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 That's, that's yeah. fair. That's it. Yeah. Well, what do you have going on this week? What's coming up? Uh, Adam submitted the first 15 minutes for uh, the next Angel novel. So uh, if you're watching this, uh, even if you don't care about me, like you should support Adam and all of the hard work he does by sure. buying those Heavenly Realms books on Audible. Yeah. We split the proceeds in half. Um, yeah. So like he does a ton of work. And my genuinely, my truest fear is that is that Adam will see that it is not worth his time to keep doing these novels, you know, and we'll be like, um, you know, like pay me up front. Yeah. Pay me up front yeah. to like make this. So yeah, that's like, why I'm like, we got to sell some books. Yeah. You know, if, if you guys enjoy this, man, like go, go buy the audible books, man, or do, do something. Cause like, God bless, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. You it know? is a lot of work. Um, yeah. or at least leave a review. If you've already bought them, a review is a big it one be too. Hitting that hard, you know? <laughs> be yeah. That hard. Adam is a phenomenal voice. Yeah, he he's a, a huge phenomenal asset. Voice, an amazing narrator, and and he does uh, he does accents. Has he has he done any accents? Yeah. Oh before? yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Dude, he's good. He's done so. Yeah, he has uh, several different accents he's using between all the characters in the Travelers League in Book Three. <laughs> it's oh, that's, that's very sweet of you. Yeah. yeah. Stuck with you for the whole series. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> you know what's sad is like I screenshot even, that. Yeah, yeah, Screenshot really. That. Yeah, is that legally binding? Yeah, can we let's run that past the lawyer? Uh, that's um, great. No, it's uh he does a really good job, and um, especially what he did with Triptych Codex was really good. Uh, which I think technically, as far as Audible is concerned, is the second Heavenly Realms novel. Okay. Um Empyrean Falling was good, Grey Aegis is good, uh Sturm and Drang is shaping up to be really good. Um, but what he did with trip to codex was really impressive and not easy, uh, because he, <laughs> poor, poor, uh, Adam, he, he gave Giad Althaziel, the third author uh, in the journal, uh, in the main book in Empyrean Falling, he gave him a Scottish accent. Oh, nice. <clears throat> right. Which sounded awesome and like totally informed the writing. Right. Yeah. But so then, your writing started changing a little bit. Right. So I started yeah. writing because I, I had a my character on the boats was a Scottish pirate. Mm -hmm. So I know that like there are some things that you you say as with a Scottish accent that you don't say. You know, you, you speak a certain way with a Scottish accent. There are word choices coming to play um, because of because of the dialect. But uh, when it came to Triptych Codex, the whole third journal is Althazio. So now he's like stuck in order to maintain consistency. <laughs> oh, no. oh no. <laughs> like reading. So I'm sorry, Adam. I should have warned you. you know, I didn't it's think great. about it. It's kind of like he um he's really expressed interest in doing this unabridged edition that we have going on. Mm -hmm. This uh, that I finally finished a couple weeks ago. This like 777 page unabridged edition. And it's really, really cool. And I'm I'm really proud of all the work we did in it. Uh, or that I did in it, but um, it's really Tempest heavy. It mm. like really fleshes out the character of Umbra Tempest. Yeah. And Adam did this, this very, very cool, very raspy, serpentine, slithering kind of voice for Tempest. Nice. That I can tell strains his vocal cords. Oh no. <laughs> right. So it's like, Adam, you're welcome to do it, buddy. I got it more or less done. I got to tweak a little bit here and there. I got a proof copy coming out on Wednesday. But, uh, but man, it's a lot of Tempest. It's a lot of Tempest talk. <laughs> so I don't know. Like, we'll, you know, we can revisit that. You may need to change up the voice. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But um, so, anyways, I got to, uh, to wrap everything up. Um, Sturm and Drang, Heavenly Realm, Sturm and Drang, uh, the third novel in the series um is or the fourth according to audible is currently in the works okay with adam okay. he's working on that so that should be done soon awesome um and then i have the proof copies for the fifth book wayfarers okay and the 777 page unabridged edition mm -hmm. uh coming in on wednesday mm -hmm. um i was working on i had some credit with fiverr so I went ahead and like hired a math artist to do like a cool fantasy like ink black and white 
kind of map. So that's we'll, cool. We're gotta, working on that. Gotta do that for the Travelers League. I yeah, you need to. I don't, like, how do you do that for the Travelers League? That's weird. Uh, you have to have twelve different maps. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cha Ching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it ain't cheap. Mm -mm. You're looking at probably. I can't draw. You're looking at probably a hundred bucks a map. Yeah. So. Oh. Gosh. I mean, maybe less depending on depending on how you want to work it. But yeah. anyways, uh, <laughs> Adam says, Don't panic. "Yeah, that's good. The effort was worth the result." Yep. Yeah, it was, man. It was really good. That would be awesome. Yeah. Let's leave it until last, so the others don't struggle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and you got Nick's stuff to work on, which I guarantee you is going to be far more lucrative. Well, you it, know. I hope it's I hope it's lucrative. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, he he finished reading book three, narrating book three, and I'm two thirds through the way reviewing that. Oh good. And I have the actual book in my hand as I'm reviewing it, and there hasn't been one miss. Yeah. There has been one thing I'm like, oh well, he needs to really go. Oh, he mispronounced that, or oh, yeah. he skipped a word, or nothing. It's like airtight. Yeah. The first like two thirds of the entire book. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, really loving it, but uh, I'm going to finish that up. So this coming week, I plan on uh, reviewing the remaining chapters. And then, you know, uh, if there's nothing to fix, we're going to submit it. And if, you know, otherwise I'll send whatever edits back to him. Yeah. But sounds so great. I wish I just found him like when I started looking for narrators for book one. All it's right. so great. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really enjoying that. Eva May's book is out. My daughter's book is out. Oh, cool. Uh, Mermacorn. Uh, Mermacorn. Yep. Yeah. Ebook. It's yeah. out in ebook. I just hit publish on the paperback today. Okay. And I was going to ask. Yep. On Valentine's Day. Yeah. Sweet. She, and she wanted, and the only reason, and my apologies to Adam, but my daughter wanted a female girl to narrator. Read it. Yeah. She wanted a female narrator. So we put it out for auditions for female narrators last week. And we got a dozen auditions. Did you really? Yes. And then wow. yesterday morning, we narrowed it down to our top three, and I let Eva May choose which one. <laughs> Cute. And so that's she awesome. chose, and so that's that's in the works. And I was like, oh, are you sure you don't like Adam? He's got this wonderful yeah. British accent. He's a great deep voice. He's a great reader. She said, I really want a girl voice. Like, oh. Okay. <laughs> it's her book. Her name yeah, is on it's it. Her book. Yeah. It really is her project, and that's the only reason. So, yeah, fair uh, enough. But it's but uh, that's in the works. And what else? Uh, we did a we got a Kid Ventures episode uploaded today. Oh, me and my kids, a yeah. Valentine's Day edition. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it. This this coming week is just more writing the next Travelers League book. Yeah, good. You know, wait, and, there's another Travelers League book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the one where I take all the different ideas from all those kids and write. Oh, them. That's a big right. long backstory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and you kind of have. Uh, can we talk about the Return of the King thing? Sure. Do you want to? Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, like, Nick has this really cool concept. I don't know. Did it come out of the the Kid Ventures stuff, or was it its own separate thing? Because we were talking about, like, the Smitty sort of Return of the King. The kind Redemption of, story? The Redemption story. Yeah. yeah. Did that come out of the Kid Ventures thing? Or no. That... No, not at all. That actually, that came, that the Redemption, Smitty's Redemption story. I mean, that started with book four, like, <laughs> Year before last, or year, really? before, yeah, year before last, yeah, yeah, yeah. See that, that's a cool story too. Like, anytime you're involving like old dudes having to be having to be badasses again, yeah, oh you know, yeah, that's yeah. always like that man in the iron mask yeah. kind of vibe. I know, haven't. That's really cool. Yeah, and and from our conversations, <laughs> the idea for that last book that has not yet been written, where the two main Travelers League guys are old, yeah. And they're brought back like somebody comes and gets and they need their help to, you know, do whatever. They you gotta come back to the world. You gotta save, save the kingdom. You gotta baby. save the kingdom. And yeah. they're like old dudes. Yeah. So I'm probably gonna write that. I love that point. idea, man. That's so cool. It's a good idea. Yeah. I'm probably gonna, I don't know. After this Travelers League book, I'm probably gonna pause on the Travelers League books for a while. Yeah. Because I have just other things I want to write. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So would that make it a seven novel series at that point if you did that book? It is five plus an already existing backstory, which yeah. Adam narrated. And um, the Myrmacorn makes book seven. Oh, okay. So the Hoppus Chronicles, what I'm writing right now, will be the eighth book in the entire series. Yeah. Then that one will be nine. nine. I might as well go for ten. Yeah, you might. Yeah. It'll probably be a ten book yeah. series. Yeah, I did the same thing with Heavenly Realms. <laughs> We're like, like. Round it up. I got to round it up. Yeah, yeah. 
Like I got to, there's twelve uh, worlds. I can come up with something. Oh, dude, you should, yeah, it's got to be twelve. I can keep going. Yeah, I mean, you should go just, all twelve. Just do twelve. Yeah, yeah, I might have to. Just, just yeah, twelve. It. Yeah, right. see, <laughs> whatever, whatever. All you can totally do. All it. five books in the series are basically like the same word count as your first book in your series. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, but like it doesn't take you ten years to do it. True. That's the difference. True. You know. True. Yeah. See, it's it's like a time versus like effort kind of thing, in a lot of ways. So, you know, well, that's I awesome, just man. I just poop out a first draft and send it to an editor and say, "Here, here's your polishing rag." You know what? I honestly get after it. <laughs> honestly, you get to a point. You get to a point with editing where you're just like, "I am so sick of dealing with this I, crap." I do one read through. Yeah. And I'm like, "Yep, no, nope, it's good enough for me." Yeah. I would read it and not throw it down. I'm going to send it to my editor. That's and Adam, God bless you, buddy. I do the same thing with your stuff where it's like, you know what? If there's nothing yep. glaring, then this is <laughs> one man's interpretation of my stuff. Good enough. Off it goes. Yeah. Like, you know, like the yeah. train just keeps, you got to keep the train rolling. Jim Powell's watching on French mythology. Yeah, Jim. Hey, Solidarity, buddy. brother. Yeah. Man, thanks for watching. Yeah, I thought about Jim the other day as I was uh, as I was cleaning my uh, my AK. Yeah, you know, like yeah, I'm back on the AK train, Jim. Just so you know, are you? Yeah, ah, yeah, awesome. I, awesome. I got to trade it for an AK pistol. Here's the thing about uh, by the AK for anybody who wants to know, the ballistics out of a 16 inch barrel rifle AK are not a whole lot better than out of a pistol AK. So if you're looking to get into the AK game, and by the way, it's a good idea to because the ammo is still pretty cheap right now. Um, get uh, look for an AK pistol. Get an AK pistol with a 12 or even eight inch barrel, even at half the length of a rifle. You're still only losing like maybe one or two hundred feet per second velocity, which is negligible at best. For what you're probably using it for, I mean. Like the AK pistols are awesome and they're so much more compact. They're lighter. They're easier to manipulate. They're, you know, they're more easy to stow, especially in a vehicle, using and out of a vehicle. Like the AK is great because it burns its powder pretty fast in the barrel. So like that round, you don't really, honestly, you don't really need a 16 inch barrel. Um, it's just, that's something to keep in mind. For anybody out there who's looking to get in on the game, and and five five six and nine millimeter ammo are so prohibitively cost costly right now. Yeah, and seven six two by thirty nine, which is what the AK shoots, has not really jumped up a whole lot. That's awesome. It's still under fifty cents a round, which is crazy. You know, despite everything that everybody's trying to do in the U.S. right now. So that's crazy. Yeah. I didn't know that. I, didn't yeah. know. I mean, five five six obviously. That's the round everyone's trying to get. Yeah, everyone's got an AR. Everyone yeah, wants that. An AR you know, that's it. super expensive. Yeah. yeah. So but I'm running out of uh, yard to bury ammo in. <laughs> running out of square. Right. I'm starting to run into like yeah. gas lines. And stuff, so. <clears throat> right. Yeah. 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 That's all right. That's all right. You know, when when it kicks off, they'll just be they'll just be neighbors. Ah. You know, there'll be, be certain minimum wage neighbors. Yeah. Who you can just. You know, fifteen dollars an hour minimum wage. Yeah, or, yeah. Here's or, your or child labor minimum. Here's wage. your here's your. <laughs> right. I got. Yeah. Apparently, I got both going on in my home mm, right now. You just run up that black flag. You know. You know. <laughs> you just be like, look. Yeah. Get out. By the way, since Jim is watching. Oh, Jim. We're enjoying. Buddy. We're enjoying bourbon Dude. from the decanter you gift us. You gift me with on this my is birthday, for you, Jim. So the Jim pal, the great, the powerful. Jim Powell. Yeah. I'm glad he joined. We do this every yeah. Sunday night. We've been doing this is episode 14. And uh, we do this every Sunday night. I've been doing it for, well, obviously, four or five months at least. Yeah. yeah. And uh, around, you know, 4, 4.30, somewhere in there. Yeah. Central Standard Time. And we've had uh, we've had some regulars like um, our narrator for yep. our novels on Audible, Adam yep. Burrell. He yep. joins us. Yep. Uh, a couple buddies of mine join us um it's a lot of fun man yeah so yeah we're, we're happy that uh that jim was able to join absolutely in, yeah. absolutely we miss you jim yeah and your, and your giant friggin' gross hobbit feet <laughs> I never you know jim is like 
Jim's the only dude I've ever seen who could like stand out in 27 degree weather with no shoes and socks on. Oh yeah, it doesn't doesn't and bother. it doesn't affect him. And Not he's and he's like in Florida. Yeah, he lives like, in Florida. Now. You know. Yeah. Whatever. He wears yeah. shorts every day of the year. <laughs> shorts yeah. and and bare yeah. feet. He's got yeah. he's got a great setup down there. Yeah. He's living high on the hog, man. Yeah. Right? I'm, hey, I'm happy you, for him. Miss having you up here in Tennessee, though. That's for sure. I'm telling you, dude, if I could – all of my friends are like – they're they're all like me in that they don't like leaving the house and they don't like meeting new people and they don't like going places. But truly, if I could get – if I could get like Jason and Delta and Jim and like an Adam over here mm. and like John and – Big great like group. David's – yeah, if I can get Star and, like, all of these people in a room together. Yeah. Like, none of them want to do it. And I get it. <laughs> I totally get it. Because they haven't met each other. Nobody's right. met each other. No one's They're met each strangers other. to each other. But it's like you don't understand yeah. the brotherhood that already exists between yeah. all of you guys. Yeah. You know? For real. And, oh, man. Well, some of them, like like Jason and uh, Delta, they they kind of have crossed paths before. But, no. uh, but yeah, let's see. Even, even John uh, – Someone texting you, someone watching and texting you. Yeah, I got a nice back a channel lurker. set up. Yeah, I got a lurker back, back channel. channel. Set up. We got lurkers yeah. watching the video that are texting us. Yeah, I got a buddy who's working on a oh a Rigby set. They got the, the inside, yeah, you know, they got the interior good. lines of communication. That's right. Yeah, deep into the live lines. streams. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, um, what do you have? Let's see. Did we cover what you have coming up? We didn't do our toast. Oh, we didn't do the toast. Yeah, we didn't even do the toast. Can you believe that? You know, it's because the mic was off and we weren't thinking about Thank it. Thank goodness we didn't do it when the mic was off. We started the first 30 seconds of the show so with dumb. no sound. All right, so if you're drinking with us, Jim, if you, if anybody, Jason, if you're – Jason, I know you're drinking, so shut up. Don't even, don't even pretend like <laughs> you Don't <not>. even play. <laughs> if you're drinking with us, uh, let's go ahead and do the toast together. Yeah. Uh, our little Gosling's toast. It's cheesy, but we love it. We yep. came up with it. Yeah. So. I'll st You start. Me start. I'll uh, start. I'll you start. start. Yeah. Take up the broken sword of your father. And strike down the darkness. Cheers. <sighs> so yeah, if we don't do that, somebody's got to yell at us. Yeah. I can't believe we missed it. I know. I well, think just, you know, kind of being under the weather and yeah. you know, he's kind of thrown off because it's Valentine's Day it and is. everything else. Yeah, it's V-Day. Crazy. Yeah. And it's happy VD. Mm -hmm. Happy VD, <laughs> everybody. Happy VD, everyone. <laughs> Go out there and make some mistakes. <laughs> And if you miss your opportunity, St. Patrick's Day, right around the corner. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. St. Give Patrick's it, Day, right it, around the corner. Literally a month. Mardi Gras in the same area. That is like right? next week, I think. Yeah. See? Yeah. We have tons of opportunities to offend God. Yeah. And <laughs> be stupid. On yeah. his, on, on allegedly his holidays. Yeah. Yeah. So. Thank yeah. you, Catholics. Yeah, that we took from the Catholics. Well, what were they doing? And turned them into excuses for yeah. drunken revelry. Yeah, yeah. Basically is what we've done. I mean, really, how is that any better than what they were doing with them anyways? You know? Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. All the elements see. are there. Yeah, six out of one out of the other. <laughs> you know, you can either bust out the communal wine or you can bust out the whiskey. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, it's just more Irish oppression. Well, it's America. The first slaves. It's America. Yeah. <laughs> All right. America. We even name our whiskey after, you know, Bullet. Bullet. Yeah. You know? I yeah. Mean, not only do we have the alcohol, we name it after cool stuff. Yeah. Cool stuff to fill up the bodies of tyrants. Yeah. 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 I'm going to get started on that. <laughs> don't. Don't. <laughs> I can't take any more news. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, no more, I can't. No more news. Yeah. But uh, yeah. if you uh, see any three percenters out there, you see any QAnon folks, just tell them the Gosling said, shut up. Yeah. Put up or shut up. Just shut up. You didn't do anything. We, shut up. We want you to be right. Just put up or shut up. Yeah. Just you know? be right. Yeah. Don't yeah. be loud. Be right. Right. Don't be loud. Be right. That's, there's yeah. a difference. Yeah. 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 For real. All right. Well, uh, Man, anything I guess, else? I don't think so. I think, uh, I think I'm going to go and sleep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go and do a Valentine's dinner with oh, yeah. mother in law, wife, and kids. We're going to get our Valentine's Day chocolate sugar rush on nice. and um yeah that's it hopefully yeah. i get in bed a decent hour i'm sure i will yeah and then writing tomorrow yeah it's gonna happen it's gonna happen four o'clock good for you i say that yeah. again put up or shut up yeah yeah not me i'm i'm just gonna keep playing diablo 2 <laughs> i know i know the recently people... rediscovered diablo <laughs> yeah. 2 yeah i know you people you have... want me to write sesquatch honestly drive. 
you know what? I've written a lot of angel books. You can go read those. <laughs> so I don't owe you people anything. <laughs> you un you ungrateful colonials. <laughs> oh, I love it, Jacob. Oh, so All good. right. Uh, I guess we're gonna get out of All here. Right, guys. We've got a thing to do. Yep. Uh, Delta, Jason, Adam, appreciate yes, you. John, absolutely. I know you've been watching too. Jim, appreciate you, buddy. Hey, buddy. Love you, man. Um, you guys are awesome. So uh let's see i guess uh yeah i think we're all caught up here i think so yeah all right yeah, cool so. well we'll see you guys all later right. bye I'm guys Jonathan. this is nick we're the goslings yep and we're out of here we'll see you next week all right bye Peace. guys see you